In this next segment, we're going to discuss electrical noise and its potential effects on a proximity sensor. When you have a sensor in a shop environment, you have motors, drives, coil windings, heaters, you've got all sorts of devices that can put a lot of nasty spikes and surges and dips on your power supply line. Uh, those different elements of noise can cause problems on a proximity switch. It can cause false ons, can cause all sorts of different problems that you notice in your controller when you see all of a sudden your, your uh, LEDs and your input start triggering or flickering whenever a motor drive pops on. PNF doesn't want that to happen with our sensors and we take great pride in having a sensor that's robust and designed for shop factory environments, not just for a tabletop. My demonstration here is going to show we, uh, a heater that I have. This heater's of course got coils in it and when you turn the heater on, the coils heat up, it generates a lot of noise, electrical noise. If I take a PNF proximity switch, I can put it anywhere along this heater and you're not going to get a false on. You can take a look at that LED down there, it does not turn on. Now let's take a look at the proximity sensor we saw in a recent demo with the 20 millimeter sensing range. So you can see the sensor several inches away from the noise source, but you're getting a lot of flickering on that LED. That's because the sensor's sensing the electrical field generated by the coils inside here. You're going to get that same effect in the factory floor when you have motors, when you have drives, when you have all sorts of uh, noise sources. So be careful of that. Whenever you buy a proximity sensor, test it out in the environment first. The next topic we're going to discuss is temperature change and its potentially adverse effect on metal face proximity sensors. Sensing environments aren't always stable. For example, on a forklift, you might drive into a freezer and then come back out. You may park the forklift in a freezer for an extended period of time. If you have a sensor on that forklift, maybe that detects the rise and uh, fall of the forks, you want to make sure that that sensor works exactly the same when it went into the freezer as when it came out. Or in a welding environment, when the weld is applied, a tremendous amount of heat's generated. You don't want your sensor sensing differently when the heat's on as opposed to when it sits at ambient temperature. The first example I'm going to show which demonstrates temperature stability is a pile driver. This is a PNF NMB10 10 millimeter range and we're going to show it detecting a piece of steel. Now we're going to show it with an ice cube compressed on the face. If the sensor's stable, you won't hear a beep. We can see the sensor pressed up against the ice cube, no problem. Now we're going to put a competitor sensor in the same situation and see how it reacts. This competitor's product has a 10 millimeter range, just like the previous model. Works fine. Now let's apply an ice cube to the face and test its temperature compensation capability. Once the face is chilled, even for a couple seconds, it immediately latches on. So remember, when evaluating the various metal face inductive sensor designs on the market, make sure to test them when it's warm, when it's cold, when it's at room temperature, and see how the sensors respond. If you find instability, that's a good indicator that you've got a product that really wasn't designed well.